I am sure that probably the majority of us have been part of some milestone celebration during the course of our lives. Either a celebration in your own life or maybe you planned one for someone else or attended it. And probably in that milestone celebration, you never would have thought you'd be anywhere else other than there. That's where you wanted to be. And you were looking forward to it. And maybe you had to travel a great distance or go through some expense to be there. We uh, often call those milestone celebrations a, a jubilee, a jubilee celebration. Five years ago, I celebrated my 25th anniversary of ordination. Right here at St. Gregory's, we celebrated Mass and had a large reception, and I had a few other parties along the way, too, you know. And we called that uh, my Silver Jubilee. And usually, if you think those milestone numbers of 25, 50, 75 years of marriage, of ordination, of religious vows, profession, we call it a jubilee celebration, a, a jubilee year. The diocese this year is celebrating a jubilee, 175 years that we have been the Catholic Diocese of Buffalo. If you take that to the first reading, first reading today uses uh, imagery about marriage. In the Old Testament, of course, saw marriage as a covenant relationship between husband and wife and also God is in that same type of covenant relationship with uh, you and me. It is like a marriage. God is in that covenant relationship with his people. And Christmas is really that uh, bodily union, if you will, the wedding, the marriage, the covenant between God and man. God is made flesh in Jesus Christ. And the Eucharist that we celebrate today and certainly every day, the Eucharist is that bodily union. Take this and eat, this is my body. Take this and drink, this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. We're reminded by the prophet Isaiah very clearly that uh, your builder will marry you, that uh, God is in that marriage covenant with each one of us. We'll take all of that to a, a very familiar song. We haven't sung it yet in church this Christmas, but the very familiar song, A Christmas Carol, Angels We've Heard on High. I think we all know that one, Angels We've Heard on High. And what do we hear in that song? Shepherds, why this jubilee? Why your joyous strains prolong? Let the gladsome tidings be which inspire your heavenly song. Glory in excelsis Deo. Come to Bethlehem and see him whose birth the angels sing. Why this jubilee? Why bring up the theme of jubilee on Christmas this year. Well, on the practical level, we do celebrate the 175th Jubilee of the Diocese. And maybe for uh, some of us, we have allowed that to go under-noticed. We've allowed that to go under-celebrated. The beauty of 175 years of Catholic faith here in Western New York. And I dare say, as we celebrate Christmas and the busyness that the season brings, sometimes we forget that real meaning of Christmas, the real purpose of Christ's birth, his mission. Sometimes that goes understated. Sometimes that also goes under-celebrated. And sometimes maybe a little overshadowed, you know, by the busyness to get everything ready, the decorations, the gifts, the parties, and so on. Sometimes we may forget what we truly are celebrating. What is a jubilee? And why this jubilee? Well, we look to the scripture and jubilees explained to us therein, primarily in the book of Leviticus, but also in other places of the Old Testament, the prophet Isaiah, second book of Kings and Numbers, Jeremiah and Daniel. 
And in the New Testament, we hear about the Jubilee in the Gospels of Luke and John and in the letters to the Romans and the Hebrews. Briefly, the Jubilee was every 50th year. Every 50th year was to be a year of Jubilee. It was to be a year of liberty, a year of freedom. Slaves were released, and they were returned to their families. Ancestral land was returned to their original rightful owner. Laborers were free from working the land for the year. And it was really a reminder for Israel, as we heard in the second reading today alluded to, they would no longer ever be slaves as they spent 400 years in slavery without a day off, 400 years in slavery in Egypt. Similarly, we learn in the scripture that every seven years was also a jubilee or a sabbatical year. It was a time to restore the land, to allow the land, the nutrients, and so on to, to rejuvenate and restore the land. Debts were released, and the Hebrew slaves were freed. But why this jubilee? Well, it was to rest. That's why the jubilee was to rest. God, in the moment of creation, rested on the seventh day and was calling Israel to do the same, and he calls you and me to do the same. Just as uh, the Israelites honored the Sabbath, so too we honor Sunday as a day of jubilee. We're to rest. I'm going to guess some of us remember when Sunday was a day of rest, huh? Stores weren't open, and we uh, went to church, we had dinner together as a family and, and hung out at home. It was a day of rest. And Jubilee also calls us to worship, to worship God. What do we hear in that song? Adore on bended knee. So why this Jubilee? Well, Jesus Christ is the Jubilee. Jesus in the manger is the Jubilee. Jesus on the cross on Calvary is the Jubilee. Christmas is the Jubilee. Easter Sunday is also the Jubilee. Every Sunday Mass is the Jubilee. As we celebrate Jesus, who freed us from slavery to sin, restored us to life, canceled our debt of sin, restores us to our family, meaning the family of God, the body of Christ, the church, who restores us to our ancestral homeland, the kingdom of heaven. This Christmas really is a jubilee. And as we look forward to a, a new year, and we make some resolutions for that new year, maybe we can resolve to take a day off on Sunday and allow Sunday to be that day of rest, to uh, Allow that day to be a day of worship, to worship regularly, to celebrate the Eucharist, to receive the freedom that God gives us in the sacrament of penance, as well as at each and every Mass, as we begin with the penitential rite calling to mind our sins, hearing the words of the Gospel proclaimed, and again, just before we receive communion, the sign of peace, freedom of our sin. So why this jubilee? Jubilee is our freedom. We are set free Christmas Day. We are set free Good Friday. We're set free Easter Sunday. And what is freedom? Freedom is, does not mean that we can do whatever we want. Sometimes we make that mistake, but Freedom really means that we do what we ought to do in the name of Jesus Christ. Freedom means to live a life within the body of Christ, to live a life within the life of the church. And this Christmas and every Sunday really is that day of Jubilee to realize our freedom and in that freedom to worship God. This Christmas I encourage you to really Reflect upon and live in that nuptial union that you share with God. God made man in Jesus Christ, born on Christmas Day, to share that nuptial union that you 
share with God every time we receive the Eucharist, his body and blood, soul, and divinity, to live in the freedom of Christ. When we have a major celebration, a jubilee, major wedding anniversary or ordination or religious vows, jubilee, you know, people save the date and they uh, travel. They spend money to make sure because they would want to be nowhere else at that moment in time but to celebrate that wonderful event with family and with friends. This Christmas, may we pray that we feel just the same way each and every time we come to Mass, each and every Sunday, that we see this to be the Jubilee, and we would rather be nowhere else than right here, right now.